Greetings, Guardians. My name is Bife here. So the story finale for the season of The Haunted has come and gone, and I have some thoughts as well as a summary of what happened for you. At the beginning of the season, I stated that I didn't really have too many more notes to make on the narrative of Destiny, as far as critiquing the storytelling was concerned. I think that at the end of the season, that still holds mostly true, but whilst the narrative itself is flourishing, I think it's fair to say that there's some big problems with the way that we are receiving that narrative. As per usual, this is just my opinion, and you should feel free to leave your own down below in the comments section, including any constructive feedback that you have for the Bungie devs, if I've not mentioned anything. This is another one of those videos where I think it'd be very good to go ahead and leave this, because heck, maybe it helps them develop something that is a little bit better next time. But first, a word from our sponsors at HelloFresh. Nowadays we all live busy lives, and sometimes what we eat gets left at the wayside. However, nutrition is important, and HelloFresh is there to help you with just that. I know that my wife and I are looking for anything that helps us stay healthy, whilst also making our mealtimes more efficient and convenient. HelloFresh is a service that helps us accomplish just that. Choose from over 55 weekly options to prepare each week as meals, all of them using delicious high-quality ingredients picked at the peak of ripeness. This also includes seasonal recipes so that you can mix things up when you want to. HelloFresh also helps you keep things stress-free. The recipes are foolproof and you can help cut back on time spent in the kitchen whilst helping you put a little joy back into cooking. What's even better is that HelloFresh is a carbon-neutral meal kit, and nearly all of the packaging is recyclable. All ingredients are also pre-portioned, which means that you can control waste, nutrition, and calories all at once. It's something very important from everyone's perspective. Less waste for you, less waste for the environment, and a better meal experience as well. Use my link to go to HelloFresh.com and use code POGBIFEJULY16 for 16 free meals across 7 boxes, plus 3 free gifts. Anyways, back to the lore. So what happened in the final week of the Season of the Haunted? Well, Eris informed us that Kallus was succeeding in slowly manifesting his consciousness within the Pyramid on Luna. We were too late. His plan had already been enacted. This was a problem because of the immense power that he could wield. However, Kallus had not completely departed the Leviathan yet. Eris described the process a little bit like a snail leaving its shell, showing that it was partly completed but not complete in its entirety. This was a chance for us to strike at Kallus and weaken him, and we would take it. We went to the Leviathan and gathered the necessary bound essence for a ritual that would be able to disrupt the connection between the two massive vessels. Once this essence was gathered, we headed to the throne room with Zavala, Eris, Keitel, and Crow all in tow, working together to set the necessary ritual amplifiers and break the lines of the Loyalists and Scorn. During all of this, we started to see Loyalist forces assault the positions of our compatriots, and it was clear that everyone was in a degree of distress. This is it. No margin for error. Eris, Crow, Keitel, get into position and plant your amplifiers. Guardian, straight down the middle. Go make some noise and draw Callus' forces to you. Amplifier set. Set to war. My amplifier is set. I'm in position in the throne room. My coward of a father is nowhere to be found. Working on it. I've got a lot of heat back here. My amplifier is set, but loyalists are converging on my position. Callist is not fooled by our attempt at a diversion. Do you hear that? Kaida, what is it? Kaida? Her comms are being blocked. Guardian, get to the throne room and see what's going on. Amplifier set! Heading to... Ah! 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 Crow? Crow, report! Eris, can you reach him? I'm already on my way. God, stick to the plan. Find Callus and... Ah! With nothing left for it, we headed for the throne room and descended into the factory that produced Callus' mechanical doubles. It led us to a portal that brought us into the Lunar Pyramid into a strange location known as the Chantry of the Darkest Hour. Here we met with Keitel, and we would face off against Callus's consciousness, which was bound now from not just the Leviathan, 
but also within the pyramid itself. The others are not with you. Then we do this alone. The power of the pyramid's nightmares was once again harnessed against us. We saw the returning nightmares from our severances. Nightmares of Gaul, Fikral, and Kethix once again rose to oppose us, but this time the nightmares were fading in their power. With each of them that was defeated, the memories of Aldrin, Sophia, and Gaul would lend their support to the battle against Kallus. Keitel was there too, of course, providing valuable shielding and firepower against her father's assaulting forces. In the end, it was not quite enough. In one sense, we achieved victory. In another sense, it was a stalemate. given himself over to the witness. My father is gone. Callus was gone, at least Callus in the sense of his former self. Though he was a terrible father to Keitel, it was clear that he was still her father, and though now he is consumed by his new role as the Herald of the Witness, this loss will still be something that Keitel will both celebrate and mourn, even briefly. But there is more closure in that cutscene, of course, which comes from Crow and Zavala. For Crow, he's found a way to reconcile his old life and the errors he once made with the new life and the opportunities that he has now to fix the mistakes of old. For Zavala, he's found a way to finally accept that he can forgive himself with the support of the ones he loved and who loved him. That Eris Morn perhaps saw the reality of the situation best, and when we debriefed with her in the helm, she was quick to inform us that this was not a victory. Even with all our strength, we barely stopped Callus. This was not a victory, Guardian. It has merely bought us time. Callus has become an emissary of the Witness. 
He is the harbinger of the second collapse. For all we know, this was Callus's plan from the beginning. Luring guardians to his side with promises of riches and lavishing them with praise. Only to slaughter all of humanity at the behest of a voice whispering to him in the dark. Callus may be gone, but the Leviathan remains, and it will take months to clear out the remaining nightmares, and assure it is no longer a threat. But even those efforts may be for naught. We have reached the point of no return. The witness is near. It is the beginning of the end. So that is the conclusion to the season of The Haunted. This is where the story ends for now, and whilst we have yet to see if there's an end of season narrative event, I think I have a few thoughts that need to be shared in this moment. First of all, the ending to the season. I think some of the members of the community would have said, that's it? Which, I'll be honest, a part of me understands. We've been waiting for a showdown with Callus properly for a long time now, and not seeing him properly in the flesh this time around was another point at which we can sit there and say, ah, he's not truly dead, his death has been kicked down the road, and that does feel a little disappointing in one respect. But also, I wonder if Bungie really did have a plan of killing him off in a season. And I have the question of whether it would have been actually the best call. He may have a bigger point later in the game's narrative, but killing him off in the end of a season would have made the ending to that season a very strong one, and it would have made things more complete for certain. I think that this point is worth pointing out though, because the lack of a true final conversation between Callus and his daughter was also something that was a little disappointing. In Duality, we see that Callus's mind is being separated between parts of his mind consumed by darkness and parts of his mind that are yet to be. And Eris comments on this torn consciousness. I almost wish this could have been represented by two versions of Callus appearing in front of us. A nightmarish one, like the ones that we've seen previously, cloaked in red and being split off from Keitel's memory of her father, which would then be clad in blue. I can imagine the nightmare Callus going off into the depths of the pyramid to serve the witness, and laughing as it did, whilst the memory of Callus apologized to Keitel, or perhaps tried to justify itself, before being killed or set to rest. Whatever it may be, the lack of this final conversation means that there isn't a real feeling of closure. The villain is not dead. The heroes did not truly triumph. The villain escaped. And I feel as though that is something that's worth talking about. It would have been nice to have a more satisfying ending than this. But then again, I think there is a counterpoint to this on the whole. Because whilst, yeah, maybe the whole point of the story should have been that we killed Callus, I think that the story is realistically not truly about Callus. He may have been the villain of the expansion, but the real heart of the story is that of Eris and us helping the three haunted faces of this season. The real characters this season, of course, that were so haunted were Crow, Keitel, and Zavala. And as far as the degree to which they've gotten closure is concerned, the story is concluded very well. They've all faced their demons and their trauma and have become much better for it. From this perspective, and with the story in mind that Bungie was telling this whole season, that is where the real narrative perhaps should be measured, and that's why in many regards I could still see some seeing it as a narrative success. This is something which I think is worth thinking about, because it is something that puts two points at odds. I do believe that the ending is something that could have been a little better. I do believe, however, that where we are with our own personal journey with the characters that we've grown to know as friends has left us in a good place. Now, I will sit here and simply say this. The narrative may be running under many degrees of success with excellent writing, fantastic voice acting, great direction, amazing cutscenes, etc. This is nothing new. We've seen this trend since the season of The Hunt, since the season of The Chosen. There have been a lot of improvements over the last year to Bungie's narrative storytelling. But cracks are beginning to show in other areas of Destiny's story, and I think this is what we need to discuss next. Because in my eyes, the problem now is not with the narrative, which I think is consistently good in quality, granted some seasons speak more deeply to some than others. The problem now is with how the story is delivered. Now, here's the thing. 
I think that whilst there is a lot of discussion to be had around Destiny's avenues for storytelling, I think that it's very hard not to have that conversation again about expansions over seasons. And I would simply put my stake in the ground and say that I believe firmly that expansions are not the right direction. When I say expansions, I don't mean things like the Taken King, Witch Queen, Beyond Light, Forsaken. I'm talking about the small mid-year expansions which the seasons have replaced. Things such as The Dark Below, House of Wolves, Warmind, and Curse of Osiris, which in my mind not only represent some of the lowest points in storytelling for Destiny, but I think also represent some of the weakest moments in Destiny's content life cycle. I would remind everyone as well, however, that some of the story highs that we've seen come from seasons. Season of the Chosen, Season of the Splicer, Season of the Lost, and quite arguably Season of Dawn and Season of the Haunted. All of these had fantastic story moments, from saving Saint-14 to the final battle in the last city's Botsa district, with Mithrax and Saint fighting side by side. Whether it was the cutscene where Keitel saved Zavala and proved her honor, or maybe it was the moment where Crow finally figured out about his past thanks to Savathun. I am a firm believer in the idea that the seasonal model is better than what we could get with a new series of expansions, even with the lessons learned by Bungie's narrative teams from making much better content, I believe that the seasonal model is better. Having said that, the seasonal model is not perfect. There are most certainly flaws to the seasonal model, and those come not just at the cost of gameplay perspectives, but also they come at the costs of narrative ones that are tied to those gameplay choices. So I think we should point some of those out and fix them. Again, I believe that the storytelling we have and the narrative that is being told is excellent, but at current it's a little bit like hearing a wonderful symphony through a rusty old pair of earphones from 1987 that were supposed to be used alongside a cassette. At worst, it doesn't work and it actively harms the narrative experience. At best, you have that nudging feeling in the back of your mind telling you, man, I really can't wait to get through this so I can see what's going on next. And that, I think, is the problem. It's the way that the story is told season by season, not the story that is being told. So, what's a keen example of this? Well, I'd say that the best example from this season, and the best example of the problem, is the containment public event. And principally, not its existence, its existence within the narrative loop that you do week on week. So, the containment public event on its own, in isolation, is perhaps a decent idea for something that can be farmed repeatedly and something that allows you to create an opportunity for players to get loot, you know? This is a decent idea. It's not terrible, there's good enemy density, people can go wild with all of the stuff that they've built into their things. Gameplay-wise, yeah, sure, there's good stuff there. You can grind it infinitely, there's a chance for high-end materials, red border weapons, all the gameplay stuff. Looks like it can tick some boxes, even if I know people aren't huge fans of public events compared to other things. But tying this directly into the narrative structure of the season, I think, is a mistake. Here's the thing. Narratively speaking, it makes sense. What they have set up here is elegantly designed with the idea that people can jump into this every single week and narratively there is a reason for them to do it. The problem is, it can be as elegant as you like, it's still filler. And it gets called filler, I think rightly so, because honestly, it does not add anything to the narrative experience outside of the lines that are stated at the very end and beginning and middle of the public event. Lines that sometimes do not add a lot. Lines that sometimes people will skip and ignore because you know what they're really doing? Going to orbit during Callus and Zavala and Keitel and Gaul's monologues so they can get into the real story mission. They don't have huge impacts on the narrative. They may contain really interesting moments, and I think that's something that should absolutely be kept in mind. That's worth salvaging. But the method by which we get to those moments is so painstakingly repeated. That is where the problem lies. I'd point out again, this is an excellent method if you want to go ahead and find a way to give players some kind of structure every single week. But ultimately, we're at what, the fourth, fifth, maybe sixth season of doing stuff like this, where we have a repeated narrative structure that we'll do every single week? Actually, maybe it's gone on even longer than that. 
I remember doing this in the season of Arrivals. I remember doing repeated public events back in the season of The Worthy. I believe I remember doing repeated Sundial events back in the season of Dawn. This structure has gone on for a long time, and it does have some merits to it. Again, you can give a fairly simple progression of quests, and it's not hard for players to navigate to. But ultimately, these things do not always lend themselves to good narrative and good storytelling, and that's something which ultimately makes them feel like filler. That's what I'd want the narrative team to address next. Now, I don't want to say that this is something which is completely flown under the radar, because I think the Bungie team knows that they want to try and break that structure up where possible. And the reason I say this is because of the fifth week of the seasonal story where we did our little lunar investigation. We went, did something a little different, we found some dead loyalists on the moon, we investigated a lost sector, and we got to a conclusion from all of that. We had some dialogue from Eris that was directly related to it. It led us to places in the story, and it was actually very relevant. It's something that tied Callus much more directly to the pyramid and showed us a lot about his plans. None of that was done inside of containment. All of that was done in the world of Destiny, sure, it was settled in private instances, but it was a small little set of story moments. And at very least, it provides the idea, maybe not the great foundation, and maybe not the best example of something that could be good for the narrative and the future of its structure, but at very least, it provides the idea that it can exist outside of the repeated containment loop that goes on week by week. So that, I think, is the biggest problem. Repeated filler content. And here's the thing, I know that saying this now is not going to fix it for next season. The content loop that is in place for next season is inevitably not going to be able to get changed in time, and ultimately Bungie would not want to change it based on what I've done and said alone, even if it is, I believe, reflecting popular community sentiment. That's not how this stuff works, and frankly, it is not realistic for game development purposes either. Feedback like this takes time to be effective, so do not expect this to change by next season. In fact, honestly, I don't expect it to change next season because of the fact that simply this is how it's been for about two years, maybe longer now? I really need to take a think about how the seasons have progressed and what's been going on with this. Either way, the point is, don't expect this kind of rhythm to the narrative experience every week to change. This is something that not only will take time to shift away from as far as the structure of game development is concerned, but also it's a far more expensive way to develop games from the perspective of time and resources. I don't mean that in terms of dollar signs, I mean that in terms of game development. Having a repeated structure every week inevitably means that it is simpler to design the quests and it means that you can more actively look towards what you can focus on in the big story moments. That's really good. I enjoy the fact that this is something that allows us to get these big narrative moments, like the first confrontation between Zavala and his dead wife. All of these moments are great, and I think that part of the reason why we get to see them is that development time is not squandered, and it is allowing these moments to speak and have their own time because nothing gets wasted. However, the bits that we do have with the repeated content that allow these other moments to exist because more development time can be pushed to them bring the entire experience down a notch. And I know that there are players out there who are frustrated. I see this any time I bring the discussion up on Twitter or any other social media feed. When I sit there and have discussions with other players, it's very much one of the most common critiques of all of Destiny's narrative is it is excellent. The narrative itself is great, but I hate the repeated missions. I hate having to do the containment public event. I hate having to get through the 30 minutes of filler before I can actually get to my storytelling. So that I think is the big change. And again, it's not really hard to imagine what a difference that might make. Take a look at the example of the second mission where we go ahead and help Crow to recover from his severance prior and help him to actually conquer his nightmare. There are narrative structures that can be out there and can exist conceivably that can actually deliver the same result, if not better. 
Imagine if instead of running the public event that we had to do this time around, we instead went with Crow around the system and discovered places in which he had proved to himself and to us that he was better than he was in his past life. I can easily see a quick loop of us going to interact with different places in the Dreaming City, the EDZ, and Nessus, where respectively, he would have been resurrected and chosen by Glint, where he would have reforged Hawkmoon, and where he would have saved Commander Zavala. All of these moments build Crow's character, and you can even have small interactions a little bit like you do in the Sever missions within these open patrol zones. You can add dialogue and character moments to these instances. Hey, maybe one of them triggers a cutscene. And again, I say all of this, and it might sound flippant to a developer who will sit there and understand the real time and effort that goes into creating moments like this and the difficulty of implementing them. However, this is perhaps what players might want and might expect. It's a story that isn't driving them to the same place every single week because yet again we gotta do another nightmare and we gotta go ahead and exercise this and it means we gotta get a bound essence. Guess we gotta go ahead and grab that nightmare harvester again. This is not the way I think that players truly want to experience Destiny's story. They want the unique missions, the real storytelling that the narrative team shows consistently that they can bring to the table. But again, do I think this is something that will be accomplished anytime soon? Probably not. And you know what? This is, however, where I do see at least a small glimmer of hope, because Bungie has been on a streak recently with going ahead and expanding, pulling more staff onto projects, and helping push more resources towards the studio, hiring more people. Have you been on Twitter in the Destiny community? Have you seen how many new people got their Bungie swords this year? I see pictures every other day with new quote-unquote bungee noobs with their new bungee dev swords. And that's awesome to see, not just because of the fact that, hey, it's a really awesome custom, but also because of the fact that these people are going to help make more Destiny stuff. They're going to help improve the game that we all love and enjoy. This is something which can help the narrative, and I don't know where those resources get allocated. It could be all over the place, but if this is one of the priorities, then I would love to see more people funneled into these disciplines to help create bespoke story settings and structures every week that don't have you repeatedly doing these public events or these same activities that will then let you charge whatever you need to charge in order to go into the story mission and complete the story mission. If there are more people being hired at Bungie, I really do hope that this is something that's being looked at and addressed, because it's the next step that people need to take at Bungie if they really want to make the narrative content shine a little bit more. And you know what? I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it's worth investing. Over the last year, Destiny has not only shown that it has a phenomenal story, but also it has changed, and I really do mean fundamentally changed the narrative around what it means to be part of Destiny's ongoing story. People used to laugh at the idea of story in Destiny. It was mocked and ridiculed. And you know what? Back in the days of Destiny 1, yeah, rightly so. We've gone from the days of, I can't explain why I don't have time to explain, to Crow saving Zavala, and having that moment where Zavala offers the hand down to him in a direct reflection of how Aldrin was aiming the Ace of Spades at Cade. These beautiful moments of symmetry that only get brought about by great storytelling. Bungie has earned the right to change that conversation, and I think it's worth investing in this now because ultimately, you don't want that conversation to stagnate. You don't want people to sit there and understand that Destiny's story is great, but it's not really too inspiring when you have to go through the same 30-minute grind every single week. This is like watching a TV show and then ultimately sitting through a storyline that no one wants or enjoys for about 30 minutes before you get back to something interesting. Like, Stranger Things is excellent and everything, but imagine if you were a weirdo and you didn't care about anything that was happening to Eleven. Imagine if everything of the Eleven storyline that happens in Season 4 was just filler to you. Can you imagine how frustrating that would be? Granted, this hypothetical human being is a strange person, but you get my point. I will, however, say something about the time frame within which Destiny's story takes place, and I will say something about the way that this current structure is helpful. 
it keeps things brief. Not so brief that they are missed, but brief enough that they don't overstay their welcome. Here's the thing. If you're an average Joe or Jill and you're just trying to tune in every week for the weekly story, it takes no more than two hours to complete it each week. And that's if you're taking your time and taking everything in, grabbing all the collectibles. That is a lot of value for people who are doing this. And again, not everybody is like you and me in the core Destiny community where we're able to grind this 24-7, either because it's your job or because maybe you're a streamer or perhaps just because you are completely and utterly invested hook, line, and sinker. Either way, the point still stands. For the average Joe and Jill, two hours of investment every week is a very worthwhile investment for what is essentially a continuation to their favorite video game TV show. What's more, I think it's really worth remembering that this is actually good for us. And I know some of you who are absolutely obsessed with continuous ongoing Destiny content are going to listen to that and you're going to think, what do you mean only having two hours of stuff to do every week is a good thing for us? And the reason I'm saying that is because you and I, whoever you are, we should be taking more breaks from Destiny. That's not to say that the game is always going to be bad, but it's going to say that we will burn ourselves out in this game if we don't take a break. The seasonal format and the fact that the stories can only take a couple of hours each week to do lend an incredible amount of support to this. Because not only does the track litter itself with certain drops that will allow you to keep up week by week, but also there's a really fundamental point to it, which is that now that the seasonal content sticks around for a year, you can put Destiny down for as long as six months and catch up on all the seasonal story in two or three days if you want to pick it back up. There is a chance of doing all of this over and over again if you need to. Now granted, some people take breaks for a longer time than a year. That is the unfortunate reality of sunsetting. No one contests the idea that that's bad. I will, however, say that when it really comes down to it, I feel as though we need to be okay with the way that this format delivers things, not because two hours of story would be better than, say, eight hours worth of story in a whole Witch Queen narrative campaign, but purely because of the fact that this is something which is manageable. The last thing I want to go ahead and do is touch again on that seasons versus expansions point, and again lend support behind the seasonal model, or at very least, a third kind of model. Something between the two maybe? Maybe something different? Either way, I need to go ahead and just say that there's a reason why this narrative model works, and I think one of the biggest points of all of it is pacing. Do you know why people really hate the Warmind DLC from a narrative perspective? It's because you go from arriving on Mars to awakening the Warmind and killing a worm god, one of the most powerful beings in all of Destiny, in the space of about two to three hours. That right there is a pacing problem. This is not a movie, this is not Star Wars, this is not okay when it comes to a video game. You need more time for things to breathe. This, I think, is the biggest full-throated defense I can give of Seasons from the perspective of the narrative and the structure it provides. Yeah, we can all say that repeated missions are not great for the story, but the fact that the story of something like, say, Season of the Haunted or Season of Arrivals is set over multiple weeks is a huge boon because it means that you can feel like you have an active, developing world around you, and it means that the story can develop each week without outstaying its welcome. You get more story content bang for your buck, and when you do have those really big moments, such as, say, I don't know, blowing up the Almighty, stopping the Endless Night, and perhaps even starting the ritual to excise Savathun's worm, these feel like real narrative achievements. They don't feel like little post-it notes that you've done in two to three hours, and then afterwards you're sat thinking, well, why couldn't I have just done that earlier? These feel like real accomplishments, and it just goes to show that two to three hours is not enough to make a concise and effective campaign experience. I think it's Titanfall 2 that proved that the minimum you can do this kind of stuff in is six hours. And that's only when you get almost everything utterly perfect. Two to three hours, including breaks to go to the tower and change out your loadout and clear the postmaster and get to the mission beacon and all the sparrow time in between, not good enough. Because you know what that ultimately breaks down to? It breaks down from two to three hours to 45 minutes. And that's if people aren't skipping the dialogue and cutscenes. Because you know that there are people who do that. 
They're just trying to go through all of this. They don't care. But there are also some people along the way who would really love to be able to get more of Destiny's story. And I don't think these expansions offer as many chances as you would when you are greeted with it every week in a seasonal story, which you can be continually invested in, where the world around you changes constantly and we are able to notice the changes week by week. You know why I made a video on the Egregore growing in the helm? It's because people asked what was going on with it. And there's a reason people asked, it's because it didn't just develop suddenly over the course of two to three hours to the point where people didn't notice it wasn't there in the first place. It grew. It changed. The world changing like that is a pacing thing. It's a structure thing. And it's part of the reason why expansions won't work compared to seasons. And again, is there a third way of doing this? Maybe some kind of mix of the two. Maybe doing a bit of both, one on top of the other. An expansion every six months with a season on top. I don't know. I'm not sure what works with Bungie's scheduling and I don't know what their story resources look like. But I will say that from a pacing perspective, the big achievements that we managed to accomplish within the timeframes of seasons work better when they're done in seasonal formats. Overall, I think there is a major thrust that it, most people in the community are echoing. The narrative within seasons is good. The story content itself, the real meat and potatoes of the stuff, is excellent. The problem is it's being served to us on a paper plate, and I think we deserve crockery. I think if there is a proper, concise mission structure every single week that allows us to really understand and get to grips with what we're doing, and to really invest ourselves further into the narrative with story moments that matter all the way through, Destiny's story gets to new heights. I think we can stick where we are now, but ultimately I feel like Destiny is only one or two bad stories away from being back in trouble, and that's what I really want to avoid. I don't think the narrative team is going to tell a bad story at this point, they've convinced me of that, but I'm not the only person out there. I've seen at least one or two people who thought that Season of the Haunted was boring. Now here's the thing, I fundamentally disagree with that. And I know that maybe that's because they don't understand the stories attached to trauma in the same way that other people, myself included, might. Maybe it just isn't the seasonal bite for them. But ultimately, even though you can't please everyone, I think it's worth remembering that there are points at which you need to sit down and anticipate that you need those continuous wins. Don't sit on laurels. You've earned them, but don't sit on them. That's my advice currently to the Bungie team. Look to improve the structure around which the story is being told, so that we can ultimately get to that third evolution. Right now we went, as I said, from the Exo Stranger saying, I don't even have time to explain why I don't have time to explain. And we ascended to Saint-14 and Mithrax fighting side by side, calling each other the Saint and Kel of Kells. I can't wait to see what the next tier of that is when the story experience is excellent throughout. Because when we do get there, I firmly believe that we will also be in a place where we may have answered a bunch of other structural issues in the game that don't just affect the story. When we get there, I will be really excited to make commentary on it. For the moment, this is something I'm going to keep an eye on and this is where I'm going to structure most of the critique going forward. If the narrative somehow ends up being bad, you can be damn sure I'll say so. However, if it ends up still remaining good but with a bad structure that underpins it, I will keep pointing that structure out, because I know that you lot have been pointing it out as well. We have a track record now, with Bungie being able to deliver on critique, even if it takes several seasons, even if it takes time, even if, if you're in the poor PvP community it's taken years. I think we have the ability to continue to push them to improve things. So let's do just that. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. If it was, hey, maybe this is something that gets to improve the game, and maybe your feedback and commentary can be included in what's helpful. So again, leave your feedback down below in the comments section. And if you thought this was helpful to Bungie, go ahead and leave a like so that it boosts it in the algorithm. Bungie devs occasionally watch the video, supposedly I've been told once or twice. I don't know. It's impossible to judge these things. The point is, 
If we signal boost things like this, then it helps get the critique out there. So I greatly appreciate that. But yeah, go ahead and signal boost the critique. If you want more from Destiny's lore and story, go ahead and hit subscribe and the bell next to subscribe to turn on those email notifications. We have a lot going on on the channel over the next month and a half as we wind down this season and move towards thinking about what we'll be seeing next. However, that's going to be all from me for now, and know that your viewership, as always, is quite enough for me. And that in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Bife, Porodasia Adastra. I'll see you, Starside.